Hi, I'm Chef Alan Tetro with Global Sugar Art, and today's video is all about molding. There are literally thousands of molds on the market made out of silicone or rubber that are used in cake decorating. There are swags and borders and animals and anything that you can think of has probably been made into a mold. The most popular molds are the pearl mold and the little baby molds, and I'll be showing you how to use those today. Let's begin by what products you would use in the molds. The product that you use for molding will all depend on the use of your molded item in your sugar craft project. Most commonly people will use fondant or gum paste. And uh, a combination of the two referred to as a 50-50 mix where you're using half uh, fondant and half gum paste works really, really well. You can also use sculpting chocolate. That's an excellent medium for molding as well. If you don't have gum paste, you can make a mixture using fondant and tylose, which is a gum additive. And it's very easy to use. Add a half a teaspoon to about a pound of, gum pa uh, of fondant and then just knead it thoroughly. And then let it sit in a plastic bag for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and it will firm up. And that works just as good as using plain gum paste. So for today's projects, for the first project I'm doing today, we're gonna make pearls. And I'm choosing to use a 50-50 mix or all gum paste. The pearl mold is long and it's thin. There, it's, it's not a deep mold and it's not a wide mold. So when I try to pull these pearls out or, or get the pearls out, I want a product that's really gonna hold together. Fondant alone will be so stretchy and soft that the pearls will all become, um, they'll, they'll, they'll stretch out of shape and they'll be very distorted. So for this project, we're gonna use a 50-50 mix. And I have some all made. The first thing you wanna do is knead it until it's soft. I like to keep a little cup of some sort of a white shortening like Crisco or some white vegetable fat. That helps uh, the fondant or the gum paste from sticking to your fingers and it also makes it much easier to mold the product. You can knead a little bit right into the gum paste. It actually makes it nice and smooth and easy to work with. So from here I'm just going to roll out a long rope about the length of the mold. I know I have more than I need here but that's okay. Put it on top. Put a little bit of shortening on your fingers and then just go back and forth and push that right down into the mold. You can't push too hard. You, you really need to, to be very firm, otherwise the, the little cavities don't fill up completely. And then when you go to unmold it, you'll have uh, partial pearls or they'll be flat on one side. So I go back again and I just keep pushing down the product. Now you need to remove the excess. And my favorite tool is just a simple little artist palette knife that you can buy at any, uh, any art store or craft store. Put a little bit of shortening on that and then start in the middle of the mold. If I start on the end, it'll probably grab those pearls and it'll be pulling them out as I'm going. I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna start in the middle and I have the blade flush with the top of the mold and I'm gonna go right to the end. Put a little more shortening on it. If you feel a lot of drag, like this is really hard to pull through, it means you just need to add a little bit more shortening to the, uh, to the knife. And I just look after to make sure that they're all filled in. And I can see a couple spots that are low, which happens. So I'm taking just a little bit of extra paste and I'm putting it right in there. There. And then the most important thing is rub your finger over the top and make sure the edges are clean. You want to be able to see the, the, uh, the outer edge of, of the mold. Uh, if you have pieces of paste hanging out over the top, that will show on your cake and you don't want that to happen. So now to use these, I need to put this mold in the freezer 
for about five minutes, 10 minutes at the max, but five minutes in a regular freezer will work well. And once that comes out of the freezer, I can unmold them, I can put some pearl dust on them, and then we can put them right on a cake. So that would be the pearl mold. Now, another really nice mold that we like to use are side decorations, and I've chosen a swag mold. And this is a pearl swag mold. And for the same reason that I use the 50-50 paste in the pearls, I'm going to use the 50-50 paste on, on this piece. When I apply these to the side of the cake, I don't want them stretching and getting all distorted. By using a 50-50 piece of uh, gum paste and fondant, it stays soft enough that a knife can cut through it. So if you're cutting a wedding cake or the bride and groom are cutting a cake, they still can cut through the cake. It's not going to be rock hard like if you used all gum paste. So I'm going to roll this out. This time I'm not pushing it into the mold. This is a different technique. I'm probably going to roll that out about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to place the mold down and put the rolled product on top of it. And then I'm just going to roll across the top and the edges of this mold will cut it. This is one of the marvelous molds that I'm using. This mold is by First Impressions. There are many companies that make molds. After I have the product in there, put a little shortening on my fingers, and I'm just pushing down. And you'll see that paste go right down into the mold. And I can already see if you can see, you can see, actually see a little bit of green right at the bottom. So that part of the mold is deeper than the sides. And the, the paste has already sunk way down in there. So I need to add more now. If I had not pushed that down, I would have never realized that that was a much deeper part. And when I unmolded it, I would only had partial pearls on the bottom of this swag. So the edges are all clean. This too will go in the freezer for about five minutes. As soon as these are ready, we'll unmold them and I'll put them on a cake, show you how, how you actually apply them to a cake. Our molds have been in the freezer for about 10 minutes and I'm ready to unmold them. I'm gonna start with the pearls. So just flip it over, starting on one end. As you lift up, try to Pull the mold apart and just allow the pearls to fall down on, on the tabletop. You'll see they come out beautifully. Now if this were just plain fondant, it would work. They would unmold. But as it, as it warmed up, and they do warm up very, very quickly, and I tried to put them on the cake, they would stretch out of shape. So I really recommend at least a 50-50 mix on this. So that's the pearls. I also molded a little uh, drop pearl border that you can see on the cake here. And here is the, uh, the swag or the drape that I did. So before I add these to the cake, I'm going to put a little bit of pearl dust on them. This is just a little bit of super pearl and a regular brush. These are my favorite brushes because they have an acrylic handle rather than a wooden handle. As cake decorators, we're always throwing stuff in the sink. And if you start throwing a wood-handled paintbrush into the sink that has paint on it, they start cracking and splitting very quickly. These acrylic handled brushes work really well for cake decorating. Now, one thing I will note is if you tend, if you, if you forget these in the freezer, you could leave them overnight. It's not going to harm them at all. But the colder they are and the more humid the climate is in your kitchen, the more likely you're, uh, you're likely to get some condensation. So if you've forgotten them in the freezer for a long time, take them out, unmold them. And if you see condensation starting, just let them air dry. And when that, when that uh, moisture disappears, then you can go ahead and dust them. So now I'm ready to put them on the cake. 
I've got a cake ready to go. I'm using a water brush. You can just use a paint brush with a little bit of water. I'm going to start with the swag. I'm just going to put a couple little dots of water on the back. And because this is still cold and firm, I can handle this pretty easily. I can place it exactly where I want and then just lightly push it into the cake. And I'll do the same with the drop border. This is a PME tilting turntable that I'm using. And if you notice, I'm able to tilt the cake so that I can, I can get a better look at what I'm doing and I'm not down like this trying to look at the side of a cake. So this is a great tool. And then to add the pearls, rather than putting water on the pearls, because I know they're all going in one place, I prefer to just put a little bit of water right on the cake. You can do it either way. This is just my preference. And then just pick up the pearls. And if they break, don't worry about it. Just add them one piece at a time or part of a string at a time. Just push them into the cake. You won't see any seams if, if the string breaks while you're putting it on. There. And that is the entire process of, of molding pearls or drapes or swags and adding them to a cake. It's super, super easy. I guarantee you anybody can do this. Sometimes when you're making a decoration that will be eaten, for instance, like if you're doing a decoration for the top of a cupcake, I'm going to use a large rose mold by Karen Davies, and I'm going to use just fondant. So I've already colored the fondant, and this time we're not going to freeze the, uh, the mold. We're, we're going to show you how to pop, pop the, mold, uh, the uh, molded item right out. So I'm going to put a little bit of cornstarch in the mold, and then just tap out any excess. And then just use a regular piece of fondant and push that into the mold. I need a little bit of shortening on my fingers so it doesn't stick to my hands. And I'll cut off any excess. You can see how stretchy and, and sticky this is because this is just pure fondant. And then you can roll on the back. And I can see that the paste is going right over the edge of the mold, so I want to cut that out. So I want this to have nice clean edges. And that's all. And now I'm just going to flip that right over and pop that rose out. And I'm going to color this to use on a cupcake. So for, for a colored product, for a, for a, um, a medium like gum paste or fondant that I'm, that I'm already coloring, I would probably choose to use a luster dust. And the reason I want to use a luster dust is because it'll give a little bit of a shine, but it doesn't color the underlying medium. So if I started with white gum paste, you'd see a hint of pink on the top, but the white would show through. So when you're using a color like this, uh, a luster dust works really well. Now, just because I molded this out of fondant and I didn't freeze it, doesn't mean you can't use the technique that I just showed you with the pearls. You certainly can use uh, a 50-50 mix or all fondant or all gum paste and you can freeze them. And then they're a little firmer and they're a little easier to work with. But you can see that this is actually pretty easy to work with as well. Once that's done, I can take a cupcake and I've just put a little icing on there and I can just lay that right on the top. And now if someone bites into that, they have a layer of fondant and not gum paste, which really doesn't taste that great. So that's one technique. I have another mold that I've already molded. This is a little piece of coral. This is a very deep mold. You can see it's a good inch or so high and it's a little more complex. So for this mold, I chose to use all gum paste. 
and I just pushed it down really firm. I let it freeze 10 minutes and then I popped it out. The reason I want to show you this mold is I want to show you the difference between using a luster dust and using a petal dust. This time I'm going to use petal dust and I'm going to start with a little deeper orange. Petal dust will completely color or cover the underlying color of, of whatever fondant or gum paste or whatever you're using. And it also has a flat finish. I'm going to move to a slightly different color. And sometimes I get carried away. Okay. And you can see how that will completely color the object. Uh, let's see, where's our, oh, here is one of the cupcakes I made using this mold. So you can see the difference between using a luster dust, which just gives a little bit of shine, it's very easy to apply, versus the petal dust, which is a little harder to apply, but it completely covers the product. Another product that you can use for molding is sculpting chocolate. It works really well. Um, if you receive sculpting chocolate in the winter, or if you live in a colder climate, it's going to be very, very hard when it arrives. A lot of people think, oh, it's dried out, there's something wrong with it. There really isn't. Uh, if it's too hard for you to be able to, to reach in and, and get a little piece to work with, I suggest that you, you take the little twist tie off, because it has metal in it, and put it in the microwave for about 10 or 15 seconds. And you may have to do that two times, maybe three at the most, and it will soften up enough for you to be able to use. But you can see that it softened up in my hand pretty quickly. So I'm going to be taking a little bit of the dark chocolate and a little bit of the white. We're going to be making some shells. I just want to show you how to make these sort of variegated look. Now, these two were made with uh, a 50-50 mix of gum paste and fondant, and that's why you get the nice white with the brown. These were made with sculpting chocolate, and white sculpting chocolate is actually an ivory color. It's not pure white, so you get a different look. One of the reasons I like molding with the chocolate is because it's super edible. Um, if you put these on a cupcake or a cake, the kids might grab the, a piece and bite into it and they've got a nice piece of chocolate in their mouth rather than a piece of gum paste. Okay, one of the other tricks that I wanted to mention earlier, if you're doing a lot of the same mold, let's say you have an order for uh, 50 cupcakes and you need to have this shell done for every cupcake. Mold it once, remove the piece and weigh it. And then just make yourself 50 little balls of gum paste or fondant or chocolate of that same weight and then it'll fit exactly in the mold every time and you won't spend any time using a little palette knife to clean the edges. So to get this variegated look, I'm going to press down I need more chocolate. I can tell that already. All right. I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit, and I'm going to take a little bit of the chocolate, the dark chocolate, and put it there, and maybe another little thin piece. I'm trying to create some stripes. That's more than I wanted. Don't be too particular about this. There's no science behind this. And I'm just rolling it together. Then I'm going to flatten it out. It's sort of like making taffy or candy canes where you're, you're putting the color in. And then just fold it over and stretch it out again. And do that three or four times. You're going to start seeing a pattern. Okay, then what I like to do is I like to, to cut it. And then you can put it in the mold. So I'm just going to push down in there. This is one of the marvelous molds, the long shell.
Because sculpting chocolate has a high fat content, I don't need to put any shortening or uh, any, any white fat on the, on the palette knife. It just cuts through very, very cleanly. I'll pop that in the freezer. And let's make this one. And sometimes you're really good and it's perfect the first time. <laughs> And this one will go in the freezer as well. And as soon as those are ready, I'll pop them out and show you what the final product looks like. Okay, they've been in the freezer for about five minutes. Sculpting chocolate really does need to go in the freezer because just the heat of your hands heats up the chocolate enough that it can sometimes be difficult to unmold. And there's one. You can see the nice variation between the, the light and the dark. So I could use any sort of a shell like that on a nautical themed cupcake or cake or whatever you wanted. Very easy project, super easy to do. The single most popular mold we sell is the baby mold. And I have two sizes here. One of them I've molded and it's actually been in the freezer so it's cold. And this is the small tiny baby, but I think we have four sizes right now. And you can see what great little cupcakes or, or cakes you can make with these. I'm using a, a flesh colored 50-50 uh, or you can use all gum paste. This is not something I would expect people to eat and because there's a lot of detail in it you definitely want at least a 50-50 mix. This is not something I would recommend that you do with sculpting chocolate either. So when you have facial features and little arms you don't want to crease in the body part. So if I take this piece of gum paste right now, you can see all the creases. If I just push that in the mold, those creases will show on the finished product, especially if you're going to dust it with any sort of uh, a petal dust to give a little rouge on the cheek or if you want to color the hair. So I'm just going to keep kneading this and bringing all the paste up toward the top until I get a really smooth ball of paste. And that's what goes down into the mold first so that all the little details don't have any creases in them. I'm almost two for two. I almost have enough the second time. <laughs> okay. The more you mold, the more you, you get to know exactly how much you're going to need. Sometimes there's little teeny parts at the end like this and you have to make sure that you get paste in there. So I'm pushing down really hard to make sure that all the cavities are filled. A lot of times if we get a call about a mold the first thing someone will say to us is I just received my mold I don't even want to take it out of the package it looks defective. And that's because you're not seeing the mold from the front. You're seeing it from the, from the top angle. And a lot of times there's little undercuts and little cavities that you can't see until you actually mold the product. So I always suggest trying it first. So this would go in the freezer definitely. You would want to freeze this for about 10 minutes before you unmold it. This one's ready to go. And you can see I'm just pushing from the back and pop that right out. And that's the baby that we use on the on the large flower up here and we use this little mini baby on the cupcakes. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the basics of molding. All of the products that you've seen today, the First Impressions molds, the Marvelous molds, the gum paste, the fond, the Tylos, all of those products are available at globalsugarart.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.